Okay, this is Arion with a game with myself against uh, Bone White. So this is the usual comp that I've been running for the aura bracket. Tokyo A2, Suki, and Karu A1. And the band phase took a while, but I edited that down. So we have... Yeah, we have uh, Hatsumi A1, Megumi, and Karuno. Um, I absolutely did not want to play against Megumi Karuno, so I had to choose which version of Himika A1 that I wanted to play against. And I decided to ban Megumi just because of the number of enhancements that Hatsumi A1 has to deal with in the first place. Like I felt like the synergy was too strong there. And that the growth would be too easy to achieve. Um, and he bans Mizuki, which, yeah, this is kind of rough for me. I don't really have a good plan for how to build Tokyo and uh, Tokyo A1 and Peru A1. Yeah, sorry, Tokyo A2. And I do end up flubbing my deck building a little bit. I guess I can go ahead and, and just point that out here now. Like one, the mistake I made was trying to do a play with Regena and Immortal Flower as like a finisher type situation, and that just gets shut down hard by Lighthouse in the first place. And I also just didn't end up having enough enhancements because of that. See, so yeah, uh. Bone White kind of gets his deck put together pretty quick. With A2, it's a dash 3, but I figured getting an extra dash 2 would be plenty for a throughout. Yeah, with, with Karu A2, you can double the effect on it, because you can regain it twice, or you double the, effect, you double the amount you, that you change with regain it. So yeah, it gets like a plus 2. That's true, for two cards. The fact that Regena takes uh, an enhancement slot and Analyze takes an enhancement slot means that I'm actually in a really terrible position for having uh, only one enhancement in my deck being Windy Stage. And that ends up making the game very difficult for me because there's a couple passes where the stage is just straight up on the bottom of the deck. I don't really have a good way to fix that with this setup either, other than using a uh, breakpoint, which I don't think I brought. So I end up going first. I keep Regena because it's an easy discard. Um, I think I move forward just because I want the aura. I know that Hatsumi can kind of go off even at medium ranges. Uh, to deal damage, I have Analyze, Dowsing, Immortal Flower. I have the Dash, or sorry, the 1 1 uh, A2 attack. I think that's um, Endless Snow or something similar to that. Um, I also have Glancing Strike and the other A2 one that I'm blanking on the name of. of. The two one that you can choose where it goes. One thing that I've learned about Karu A1 is you want to bring as many attacks as you can with her because of the uh... Yeah, no, I don't think anything there has a choice except for potentially dowsing. But even dowsing can theoretically get some stuff there because they just stop respecting their aura at some point.
But you're right, anything that has a choice between aura and life probably won't hit life, but hitting aura is fine too. Because hitting aura affects your opponent's economy, and if you're just always hitting life only, they're going to have all the flair they could ever want. Unless you also have some kind of flare drain. I will say Submerge is actually fairly strong against uh, Tokoyo because you have. Is it just straight up counters glancing strike if you don't um, have another card to play with it? And being able to have the lighthouse up makes that difficult also, or more difficult. So see here, theoretically, there's another kind of perfect example of a spot where Dowsing can hit him, but he's also just being a little disrespectful with this dive bomb. And going to zero aura. I do think so, but I am running Windy Stage, so I can pretty easily dive down to 5 and potentially douse something from his deck. I would also need to uh, get with a uh, attack or play an attack out first. Oh wait, no, he, he did it so it disenchants immediately, so yeah, like, that's that's fine, that gets the life hit, and I can't do anything about it. But he is also leaving himself at zero. So yeah, it's fairly safe. I think the best I can do is break even. Unless I get lucky and pull something with, with dowsing, but... I really think I should have taken... Oh, wait, no, that makes sense. Never mind. It's like, why didn't I take one from Shadow there? I knew what I was doing, I guess. Oh, did we... Oh, yeah, yeah, that should have triggered when we uh, revealed... the. No, 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 that should have triggered when... Why should that have triggered? That should have triggered when we did the uh, Windy stage, yeah. I thought it might have triggered when he disenchants, but no, it didn't happen. Wow, that's a big miss. Oh, crap. I think he caught it there. Yeah, okay. So we, we're backtracking. And that's a backwards.
Yep, I sadly have to give up on the cards that I would be able to punish with there. I do get a 1 1 to life, but. I mean, the punish is really only one life damage. Because of the special. And I end up having to pro or drop Drain Devil to get the mechanism I need for Analyze. Overall, pretty wasteful turn, but I do get three life damage. And I guess in some ways him being at zero aura plays around Drain Devil. It's interesting to me that he uh, holds on to blade dances. He's been holding on to blade dance this whole time. I, I definitely agree that it doesn't make sense to play it out here, but... Right, and that would make it harder for him to keep me at range, which seems to be, which was kind of his game plan here. There's my dead card, going to the discard.
I was also trying to play around Hatsumi's 2-2 for a lot of this game. Especially in the early phases. That one's pretty brutal if it catches you at the wrong times. Aquaform Salvo. I think we were FAQing here. Um, question was whether he could initiate another dive while he was already in a dive, or while the, the the submerged thing was in effect. And the answer is yes, he can. Yeah, I don't think you can resolve multiple dives. At the same time, I think if you're currently submerged and you dive again, you you don't do anything with that. But I think if your dive has already like turned face up, then you can still do a dive and you still have the virtual effect in play. You can still submerge again once the dive has come to resolve. I mean, terminology. So we're still at range 7 at the end of his turn, but he has submerged again with his enhancement. And I believe... What is special of research there? Or no, research is on headwind, that's right. Never mind. I just throw that out to turn Lighthouse face down. A little disappointing, but... Oh yeah, and to resolve the dive. Wait, no, 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 that shouldn't have happened. Oh well. I'm in an awkward position where I don't really have the mechanism to do anything with dousing. But I think I play it just to uneven his deck. That's a good point, yeah. If I had waited to you know, to catch Dive Bomb, that that may have had merit. I think I was running into issues drawing my enhancement anyway. 
But if I could get Windy Stage and then Death Dive Bomb, that would have been pretty solid. I think the game would have been a lot different if I had taken Sunny Stage instead of Regana. That looks like acid spray. Oh, it's torrent. Okay, he does tol torrent all out here. Which Torrent would have been a fine tech to Song and Dance, except for the All Out version gives it no reactions normal. Aw, oh, Strike, that was the one. I think it was this turn where I was like, excuse me, where's my windy stage? The drain devil proc, hooray. Didn't even realize he brought that card. Interesting. Yeah, not not terribly useful at this range, but I could see how it might potentially be good.
interesting. Either way, it's one damage to my aura if I use a song and dance on that. I do take that to Aura, considering that I can uh, use Song and Dance to do Aura to, or Flare to Aura if I need to. Opening flower does... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean, so that I can regain it. And he plays a 2-1, and I can't really do anything about it. I can react just for the vigor, but... That's not amazing, unless I'm about to reshovel. And I think I have three cards left in my deck right now, because I, I was kind of banking on redrawing an enhancement. It doesn't matter, though, because Lighthouse would have forever kept that plan offline. Yeah, bottom card of my deck was uh, that. Sunny stage, not windy stage. You think Sonic for Sunny? I was thinking uh, Regina for Sunny. Because Regina is just literally unplayable this whole game.
I think on this turn he dodges my my one one with his that's me special reaction, which completely I I didn't play around it at all even though I could have. But at the same time, it's like why would you bring that? <laughs> You would think that I would have a plan fully formed by the time I started doing something, but... I think I was talking with Bone White here. Something about why I didn't react to Blade Dance this turn. I had to remind him that I had no flare to put to my aura. I have no idea why he does this. Okay. 1-1 one, one cancelled. Yeah, I think it was on in some part him recognizing that he wasn't really going to have many other chances to play that card. Because he originally brought it as like a counter to me aggressively using Immortal Flower, he said. Right, like if I was trying to lethal with it. That's true, he also could do that. It, wait, no, can he? Does it affect on the opponent's turn? I think it does, you're right. That's true. It would very much uh, stop Hollow Blossoms from being a thing if Hollow Blossoms 
is ever actually a thing. Yeah, it would if he doesn't didn't have a lighthouse on pretty much constantly. I'm pretty sure he has lighthouse on for the rest of the game every time he ends his turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it doesn't matter. You can't gain a if you if he has lighthouse, it just does nothing. Oh, does that get around Lighthouse? Okay, that's news to me. I just assumed that nothing would happen. I assumed that if you play it from discard pile, it's still as if you're playing it from hand. Is that an intended mechanic? Like, can you use, uh, I don't know, Obro's Induce as a trap if you're playing it as a trap when Lighthouse is up? Interesting. Well, I didn't know that, so I just assumed that it would always be offline. That's too bad. I, I may have been able to to trick a win out with that. In spite of everything. I really, really needed to have two enhancements in this deck, though. My god. Oh yeah, this is uh, the mastery distance catch. And then I think this is the last turn. This is where uh one white checks mate checkmates me here. With a little bit of help from me. But he's gonna play a torpedo and then up his enhancement, and I think that does it.
This is an all out torrent, and maybe it wasn't. Oh, God. Yeah, all right. Try harding. Okay, so he's not using it all out. He's just using it as a... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Very late to start keeping track. I, I do think it's funny. It's a very valid criticism, but a lot of newer players, and myself included, start putting way more effort into like the last few turns of a game instead of you know putting an equal amount of effort into all the turns beforehand. It's like, you know, okay, you're going to start really trying when it's too late to make a difference. That's true. It's easier to make choices, but at the same time, you're also faced with... Uh, you usually wind up, at the end of a Sakura Arms game, you, find, you wind up faced with a dilemma where you think one path could lead you to winning, and the other one is like, you're going to lose hard and, and die. But the, the the issue is that either path could be that. So it just depends on what your opponent has. And here it's absolute zero. Not absolute zero. No, 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 no. Frostbite. And then the submerge. 
I bomb. Then he passes. And I'm like, huh, you're not going to play your special? Why not? That's weird. He was like, oh yeah, I should have done that. And then I let him do that. <laughs> Pretty well seals it because they get flinched and it's another life damage. So if I take these hits, then I just have the cards I have left. I know there are no attacks in them. If I reshuffle and I don't win off the reshuffle, I die. So that's that's the dilemma I'm on for this turn. If I'd known that I could get past Lighthouse with uh, playing Regana from the discard pile, that that would have been a uh, reasonable path to go down. I could have just uh, drawn my cards here, and one of them would have been Windy Stage. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't be able to do anything this turn, but I would be able to set up, play Windy Stage, and then if I don't die to Frustration Damage, I'd be able to uh, regain it. That would be... That would be the path on that side. Because he can't reshuffle either, and he only has whatever cards he has left. I've played out both my attacks, so I don't have an attack to analyze. He doesn't have a discard pile to analyze. He definitely has Cyclone Blades. I never saw that attack this game. So that would still be a thing. Now to be able to play, I think if he got something like Cyclone, no, even, even, I think any one of them would be enough, so I think I did have to reshuffle, right? Because uh, the only one that would be bad would, like, if he got Blade Dance, that would be pretty bad. I mean, for him. Um, yeah, I just lose here. Because Glancing Strike loses to the Submerge. I do have Windy Stage, but Windy Stage uh, will trigger the Submerge when I play it out. Or will trigger the Lighthouse when I play it out and do nothing. And then uh, the Submerge distance won't uh, matter. I won't, be able to, I won't have any actions that I can use to move it. <laughs> 